At the Gainesville State School, things are not quite like they are at any other high school campus. Here, the students, ages 13 to 19, are all convicted criminals. Most of them are from larger cities, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, places like that. Most of them are behind not only educationally, but they're also behind developmental and maturity. Usually one or more parent has, they're incarcerated. A lot of these things have to do with gang situations. A lot of them had already done drugs by the time they're 10 years old. So what we try to do is get them to stop their offense cycle, stop the, the very second they understand that they're going to make a wrong choice, we redirect them. Theft, burglary, drugs, quite a few have committed armed robbery or aggravated robbery. There are some that have committed sex crimes. Most of the time it's repetitive behavior, and we hope eventually they redirect themselves. Life at this maximum security facility is anything but normal. Yet if these kids achieve in the classroom and meet the school's strict behavior standards, they can play football, the one thing that provides a brief brush with freedom. They have to be what we call stage three. Stage three criteria is someone that, that meets their expectations 70 to 80% of the day. They haven't caused continuous problems in the classroom, the dorm, the cafeteria. Now they can play football. I seen it as a way that I could release my energy. It was a good way to get out of that tension on my chest. So I, that's why I picked it up in the first place. But then after a while, it, it really motivated me. The chance of getting to smell that popcorn, the chance of seeing a cheerleader, the chance of hearing these people in the stands yelling and screaming and the band's playing and everything else like a football game, and that's what they look forward to. Yet for the Gainesville boys, every game is an away game. Every crowd an away crowd, most with little understanding or compassion. Each experience holds a constant reminder of who they are and what they've done. After suffering through a 2008 season that saw eight consecutive losses, and after scoring just 14 points all season long while giving up over 300, the Tornadoes travel to Grapevine to finish their season against private school powerhouse Faith Christian. Faith's coach, Chris Hogan, had a game plan for that night that had nothing to do with football. As soon as I knew Gainesville was in our district, I wonder what that's going to be like. I, mean, I bet you there's a way to impact them. The outgrowth of that was what would give them the most hope. And so then we had the idea. Hogan sent an email to the entire faith community asking fans, students, and parents to do something out of the ordinary. Cheer for Gainesville and make these boys feel like they were their own. So Coach Hogan called me and I'm going, oh yeah, here we go. He's going to make us a spirit line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's going to make us a banner. Here we go with JV cheerleaders and a little bit banner. Well, we get down there and uh, uh, I said, okay, this is going to be good. And I turn around and look and there's this big long line, this 40 yard line. It surprised me. I couldn't, I was going, this is way past amazing. I just seen all the people right there and I was just shocked, surprised. Then when I found out it was a spirit line, they wanted us to run through it. I mean, it just, I don't know, it just, it was just a good feeling to have. The all them people just can't come out there and support us. I figured we were just gonna go around them. I figured it was for the other team. But uh, Coach Williams, he said, uh, run. I said, mm -mm. they're on the right end. They're here for you. Why are they here for us? I said, don't worry about it. Run through that line, crash through that banner, and have fun all night long. That's what it's all about. We just kept running to the other side, and it like we didn't want to stop. Like it was just like a, a rush. Like we couldn't stop. After they made the spirit line, they came and sat on our side. I was thinking, I was like, what are these people doing? For the first time, the boys from Gainesville felt like they were the home team. You saw hope in their eyes when they came out and saw that spirit line, and then confidence every time the fans cheered for them. I think that's the biggest thing that impacted me. I never experienced other parents of cheering for other team. I think it never happened, but it happened that night. It seriously looked like they just won the Super Bowl. They were so happy. They were just so enthusiastic and happy about the way that night had turned out and what had been done for them. 
It's almost like they didn't have to prove anything. There was such a celebration of them, they began to think, yeah, we are a team like everybody else. While the scoreboard showed Gainesville coming up short that night, losing by a score of 33 to 14, it hardly mattered. Amen. Just that feeling that we had, you couldn't convince nobody on that team that we lost. You could show us the scoreboard a million times and you still couldn't convince us that we lost. I felt like God was just touching upon all of us and letting us know that there's people out there that care about you, even though they don't even know us. That was the first time they ever seen us ever in their life. What we did in our past, they didn't care about that. They just cared that we was there right then and there and they wanted to love us like their own kids. It feel good knowing that the people are left to that, that even though they don't even know you, they're gonna care about you. Their emotional maturity went up several years that night when they saw that there were more people out there that were giving of their heart. These are the things that makes them feel that they're just as important as any other kid on the face of this earth. It motivated me and gave me a lot of hope. They're willing to help us as long as we're willing to help ourselves. They're willing to give us a second chance as long as we're willing to take the second chance. We could be affirmed in the fact that we really made a difference that night, and I think well, you can see it's down the road and made a difference. Had we done this before, maybe 10 or 12, 15 years ago, had we done things like this, there's a good possibility that this place might not even exist. Yeah!